And now it's time for the King's Corner Sports Sound Off. The Packers turned a lot of heads. Ted Thompson turned a lot of heads this past weekend when he made cuts down to the 53-man roster, right? Um, if you read, which I highly encourage you to do so, uh, head over to King's Corner Football dot com it's actually king's corner sports but again that whole thing with having to buy a whole new domain domain name i'm not really too excited about that so i'm going to keep it king's corner football for now and just one less hoop to jump through at this point but i would head over there and check out the article that i put together with the help of mike schroffnagel mike predicted the 53-man roster and he got a few wrong i think he had six out of 53 wrong which is pretty impressive so you can read about that, but the one that he said that everyone would have gotten wrong, I agree, I would have gotten it wrong too. Josh Sitton was released by Ted Thompson and the Packers, and it's something that's been a hot debate on the forum boards, um, whether or not they're about Green Bay or not. I, I saw an NFL.com one where pretty much everyone in the league was calling Ted Thompson an idiot. Okay, if you don't agree with it, that's fine. I'm not necessarily saying I agree with it. There's a lot of question marks now surrounding this team this season. Fine. I'm okay with that. Here's what I'm Here's the comments that I hate to see and the comments that make me honestly I have not gone on a Green Bay forum or Green Bay Facebook post or Twitter post or anything in the last week because I can't read about people who say that Ted Thompson is an idiot and he's one of the worst GMs in the league. Because there is no substance whatsoever to support that suggestion at all. And it's not even close. It's not even close. Ted Thompson is one of the best GMs in the league. You couldn't be so much more backward on your analysis of him. He makes hard decisions. I wrote in the article, when you're a good team, you have to make hard decisions. You have to let good players go. That's the way that this league is. That's why free agency is the way it is. That's why they added free agency. So that teams that drafted well, like the Packers do, can't keep all their guys. That's why they have a salary cap. People don't get that. It's much easier when you have three, two or three good players and then you know a handful maybe. So, so you have your starters that are NFL players. And after that, well, if there's any injuries... Your team's not that good. And for teams like the Browns, we're not even sure if they have 22 quality players that should be playing in this league. And then you get teams like the Packers where you want to get Lane Taylor on the field. Because the way it is in the NFL and the way that it always has been, there are very few players who peak later in their career. Very few players. As I see it, and this was the same case that I made when they let go of Brett Favre, when you have a player that you think is going to be good at whatever position, name name a position, I don't care which one you pick, quarterback, guard, tackle, whatever. When you have a player that you think is going to be good, there's only so long that he can sit on the bench before all of a sudden it becomes a waste. Think of, think of Rodgers. If he sits on the bench one more year, then it, 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 then it would have been a, an eternity an eternity since he had last started a football game or played in a meaningful football game because of the longevity of Favre, which was, you know, awesome. Awesome for the Packers to have that. But after so long, at what point does the mindset of a player get so damaged that they aren't a starter? After four years, you pretty much have to expect that you're going to be a perennial backup at whatever place, you know, at whatever team you're at. And then you don't have any sort of resume when you hit free agency. You're, you're a guy with potential. That's why I think you have to get Lane Taylor on the field. If the Packers are so confident in him, he has to start seeing meaningful action. And he didn't play that bad when he had to sub in at guard last year. And the Packers over the last two years have really relied on him to be that number one guy when there was an injury. Guards... Good guards and solid guards are a lot easier to find than solid tackles and good tackles. 
That's why you see David Bakhtiari being kept. That's why you see versatile guys being kept on the Packers line. Spriggs can play multiple positions. Lindsley can play multiple positions. Treader can play multiple positions. Uh, TJ Lang, he can play multiple positions. That's why you keep guys like that. Don't at all ever suggest that Ted Thompson is not worth his weight in salt. Because I, I saw I saw one uh, a comment like that. It, how asinine of a comment does that have to be? How spoiled are Packer fans to actually, with a clean conscience, say that stuff? I just I don't know what kind of fantasy land you have to be living in in order to actually justify saying something like that. I just I don't get it. As I said, I've said a million times, there are plenty of people, plenty of fans of other teams in this league that would love to have a guy like Thompson. Me and Kyle talked about it on last week's episode, episode 18. You can find that at Kings Corner Football slash episode 018. We talk about that too. The, the Raiders are turning their franchise around. They're doing it through the draft. They're doing it through developing players, and then when there's a free agent that fits their system, they go out and get them. This year, Assembly uh, comes in and instantly makes their offensive line better, a big thing that they needed. Guess guess what? Their GM, yeah, he he's from the, the Ted Thompson tree. Just another one, John Schneider, Seattle, rebuilding, rebuilding that franchise with Pete Carroll. Yep, Ted Thompson tree. There's a reason for it. There's a reason that there's success throughout the league in drafting and developing players and then hitting that one free agent that you need, um, Charles Woodson, uh, Julius Peppers. You don't, you don't need to go out and splash cash every year, and you don't have to keep every one of your studs. You, they didn't have to keep Bruce Irvin out in Seattle. You don't have to. When, you, when you're drafting and you're developing good talent, there's no reason to go out and splash cash. And there's no reason to overpay when you, when you have situations that require contracts, contract negotiations. Thompson has eased some of the pressure on himself and his staff going forward with this sit and release. And we can all say what we want about Sitton being a great guy and servant of the team and and everything that goes along with that great thank you thank you josh Sutton. we appreciate that we appreciate your service but at the end of the day this is a business and loyalty packer fans should know the number one loyalty in their minds better be to them because that is the biggest thing that they've asked for from thompson be loyal you know be loyal to us well it's cool that Sutton was loyal to us it's awesome that he's not someone that's in the media and, and bashing Green Bay or whatever else. He loved it here. That's great. I don't love paying a guard $7 million and probably more because he's one of the top guards in the league. When he had to resign next year, there's no way he's taking less than $7 million. I don't care how much he likes Green Bay, how much he loves Green Bay. And guess what? Bakhtiari is going to command a really nice salary at tackle. And as I said before, it's harder to find solid tackles than it is solid guards. That's just the way the league is. You don't have protection on both sides of you. And the Packers guards, they've been really, really good. But guess what? Their centers have been pretty solid over the course of the past five years, and their tackles have been solid over the past couple of years, barring injuries. Bakhtiari, yeah, he gets penalized a lot. Yeah, he'll give up that occasional sack. But when you're talking about a blindside pass defender, blindside tackle, a left tackle, I'm going to take my chances with Bakhtiari protecting the jewel of our franchise in Aaron Rodgers. I don't think Sitton is going to make a difference that big that all of a sudden Aaron Rodgers is going to get obliterated. Every time he steps out on the field, that chance is going to happen. Good players are going to miss blocks. It's I just... I can't justify, and I, I can't stand, 
when Packer fans start talking out of their you-know-whats. And it happens quite frequently for a team that goes to the playoffs every year and most years to the NFC Championship game. That happens far too often. There's not a lot of teams that could have dealt with injuries like they did in their Super Bowl run in 2010 and in their run that they made last year. Very few teams in, in the league, very few te- I would I would be willing to wager very few teams in the history of this league would be able to deal with injuries as well as the Packers have both last year and in their Super Bowl run when they made it in 2010. And you want to know why? It's because they have young guys ready to perform behind the studs. That's the way it is. That's the way it is, and that's the way it's going to continue to be under Thompson, and I love it. I love it. And even if I'm just saying it to spite you other Packer fans that don't, I love it. And I'm not saying it that way. I mean, I, I honestly, honestly, I really, really, really enjoy the way Thompson runs this team. And I enjoy that there's always next season to look forward to. Now, yeah, the clock's ticking on Rodgers. We gotta, but some of that's up to the, to the players, right? There's only so, mar, so far good coaching and good GMs can get, can get you. you know, can only get you so far. When it comes down to it, when you have two Pro Bowl caliber receivers one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, a Pro Bowl running back, a couple Pro Bowl linemen, a defender that is overrated but said to be one of the best linebackers in the league in Clay Matthews, a stud for his whole career in Julius Peppers, and a really young, really talented supplement in the secondary. Yeah, you got to start winning games. Yeah. You got to bring that Lombardi Trophy home one more time, at least. The squad right now is talented enough over the course of Rodgers' career to put together a New England type of run before he's done. To go out there and get, you know, knock on wood, but to get like three out of five years, this team is more than capable of doing that. And Packer fans, sorry. You have no one to thank but Ted Thompson. Well, that's going to do it for this sound off, folks. Thanks for joining me. Um, I really appreciate you joining me. Thanks so much. Um, I should have episode 19 out to tonight if I can get this uh, this new mixer thing all set up and making sure that that's working okay. And then I will have another sound off tonight talking about the blunders of last night's game in which uh, Cam Newton was just absolutely battered all night long and just could not buy protection from his line or or the referees or anything else. So uh, I thank you so much again for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Hopefully going to be doing quite a few more of these video sound-offs over the course of the week, and I might stop doing them in the podcast. That way I can save, you know, some some space inside the shows to bring more content to you and not have to worry about going over my data cap every month. So that's kind of the plan. We'll see how it works out, but yeah. Um, Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in the future. Until then, may the ball bounce your way. This was a King's Corner Sports production. If you liked this show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss the latest and greatest news in the world of sports. Check out kingscornerfootball.com for more information. And remember, it's your sports in his corner.